There's a real easy hack to get your squat to progress. Our next caller is Zeynab from Germany. Zeynab, how can we help you? Hi, guys. How are you all doing? Good. We're great. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you so much for this amazing podcast. Listening to you guys is literally the highlight of my day. So thank you so much for having me today. Um, to give you some context, i 21 and I just got back to weightlifting three months ago. And I've been consistently following a PPL split because I'm still excited to go back to training and hitting the gym five or six times a week. And I made significant progress in just three months when it comes to muscle gain. Um, maybe, I don't know, because I have genetic potential or muscle memory from previous training, but lately I haven't been able to progress with my squats. So I increased the weights for my accessory movements, but my squats are stalled. Um, the only explanations that I, that I could come up with is that my upper body is not as developed and strong as it should be to handle the weight anymore for my squats. So my question is, how do you deal with stalls on compound movements when accessory movements are progressing? Or uh, also, like, do you guys have any advice on correcting strength and balances between the upper and lower body? Can I ask you where your nutrition is right now and where it's been? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm currently eating intuitively. Um, I have celiac disease and I have so many um, allergies, so my diet is pretty restricted. Um, my my protein is high. Um, my carbs are a bit low because I don't tolerate um, grains and stuff, so I don't have that in my diet. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much just whole foods and um, like meats. Um, organ meats and um, some vegetables that I can tolerate, some fruits. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, um, just for the gut stuff, have you gotten tested for SIBO, by the way? Uh, no. Okay. No. I would recommend that you you find yourself a, a good gastro um, doctor and, and ask them for a SIBO test, so that's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's common with people who have kind of intolerances to grains. It's very treatable and it can make a huge difference. I'm somebody that has done this and it makes a big difference for me. But let's talk about the, the question, right? You're talking about squats. There could be so many reasons why your squats are not progressing. So I'm going to ask you a few more questions, just get a little bit more information. Um, what are the rep ranges that you're training in? How often are you squatting? Um, and are you what other auxiliary lower body movements are you doing? So uh, my rep ranges are between six to eight, um, five sets, five working sets. Um, yeah, I think I'm like, I'm trying to focus on my form. So like, I don't want to compromise the form. So once like, I, I feel like um, it's like, I don't have a good form. I just like uh, stop immediately. And um, I'm squatting twice, a, twice a week. And with some variations, uh, squat variations on the third day sometimes. Are you doing split stance exercises like, uh, like yeah. lunges and Bulgarian? Uh, what about hip yeah. thrusts? Yeah, I okay. hip thrust. Okay, so it could be that you might need to change your program. Yeah, how long have you been running that? Yeah. Six, to, six to eight reps, how long? Uh, three months. Oh, now. yeah. There, I, there I would, you go. I would change that. I would definitely change that, that rep range. You might need to go through a few weeks of a – Higher, yeah, rep higher rep range. I would love to see her do anabolic and start in phase three. Yeah, that could be that could be really good. Um, have you followed any of the MAPS programs? No. Okay, we'll send you MAPS anabolic, um, and you might want to start in phase three and then go backwards, phase three, two, and one. Do the three foundational workouts a week, and then and then do the trigger sessions on the off days. But it's you know it's it's typical that your body will t will stall in a lift. After about you know eight to twelve weeks is is usually when you'll start to see if plateaus are going to happen they'll start to happen around there. Changing the rep ranges is a really easy way to get things moving again. Like if we got you to focus on fifteen to twenty reps, you're going to have to go way lighter. It's going to be really exhausting. But after about four weeks of doing that, you're going to feel like you're getting good stamina and strength. Then you can go back to the lower rep ranges, and then within a couple weeks, you, you'll probably start to see the weight move back up. Now, as you stalled, did you notice any real sticking points in the lift that were obvious? Or is this more just, you know, you, you got fatigued during your sets? I just get so fatigued, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So, this, so that advice would apply. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll go even further. Like I would, I would love to see you run maps anabolic, which will send that over to you in the order Sal said. So start in phase three, go to two, then go to one. Then I would love to see you follow that up with maps performance, run it in the orders design, and then follow that up with maps power lift. If we're talking about getting yourself a badass squat, I'm hearing, I'm hearing what you're telling me right now, where you're kind of stuck in a plateau and how you've been training. That order of programs, uh, watch where your squad is at in three yeah. months. And she's a, she's a college student. Why don't we give her all three of those? So that's MAPS Anabolic, Performance, and Power Lift. You're going to be set, actually. So the advice we're oh, giving yeah. you, you don't even have to remember it. Just follow the programs the way that we're explaining, and you should see your body really start to progress um, pretty consistently. Yeah. Right out the gates, we're going to switch you to a, a total different rep range by going to Anabolic, Phase 3, first, 2, and then 1. So that'll be good for you right away. And then we'll address some mobility, unilateral work, and performance, which is going to – and you, so initially, maybe you won't see the squat go way up right there. You may, but you may just hover around just taking care of the body like you need to. And then when you go into MAPS power lift, then you'll start that, to break some Then PRs. you're going to start to hit yeah. PRs. Yeah. You'll, you're, you're, just make sure you keep us informed when you hit that you know, 400-pound squat. That's right. <laughs> what, are you squatting? what are you squatting right now, by the way? <laughs> Fingers crossed for that. Thank you so much, guys. No problem. Zinni, Zinni, real quick, what are you squatting right now? Just to, just for out of curiosity. Uh, 50 kilograms. Okay, so like uh, that, 120 pounds. Yeah. That's right. excellent. How much do you weigh? Uh, around 145. That's really good for, time. yeah, that's really good yeah. for six to eight reps. That's a good so, ratio. Yeah, Especially I, I think if you're we'll focused be able, on form. I think we'll be able to get your squat uh, 30, 30, 40 pounds higher uh, within that period of time. So let's see what happens. I hope so. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, excellent. All right, cool. Let us know what happens, okay? Okay, thank you so much, guys. Have thank a great day. You too. All right. Thank you. So, I, lo I love the international callers. Yeah, yeah. Great, hey, right? similar to the kind of the last caller, you know, is stuck in that, you know, five by five or low rep range for an extended period of time. You know, when you're when you're so hung up on on being strong, this is the this, I think this is the Achilles heel to chasing strength. We always talk about how, totally why you should do 100%. that. Yeah. And it is good for people that have body image issues and stuff like that but this is the achilles heel to chasing strength is you get so hung up on adding weight to the bar and it gets exciting when you do that right you keep getting stronger mm -hmm. and stronger that you stick in that routine too long and then the last thing you want to do is go like oh i've been crushing five by five. Oh, and now i gotta do 15 reps and i gotta cut my weight Yeah, my by weight's down by 50 percent. Yeah, you know yeah. this is by the way this is the achilles heel of any program that works mm -hmm. you do something that works really well for three months you are stubborn to move out of it. Oh, yeah. You don't want to leave. No. Because it's working. You yeah. know? And then when it doesn't work, it's panic. Yeah. So, yeah, you just got to stay ahead yeah, of it. Yeah, I, I used to stay in a plateau for like four weeks before I'd finally get it through oh, my I thick would, skull. That I was would time to move. I would yeah, be dude. longer than that. It would be longer than that. I would stay in the same program and training modality way too long. Really? I think, yeah, and that's why I think we're so adamant about talking to that yeah. because I think, you know, here we are trainers. We have the knowledge, the information, yet – even we're guilty of doing this. So you know most people are. You get you get a little bit of momentum and seeing results. You like it. You enjoy it. And then you just stay in that, that, that phase, that routine just way too long. Yep. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.